Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And this is Nika Monford, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. And you're tuned into the Snob OS show, the show for Apple snobs, where we talk all things Apple and then some. We definitely want to thank you back for another week of the show. Uh, definitely appreciate all your continued support, all your downloads. Be sure to definitely download us when you uh, see that new show come out, rate and review us. Uh, definitely support us on pay, uh, Patreon, becoming a supporter, uh, shouting us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, do all the things. So we definitely all want to nice. thank you back for another show and we're going to get right into it. We're going to start off with a lowdown where we talk all things Apple and uh, not only this first one is going to be what's in the lowdown. This is also going to be my uh, tip for the week. Uh, iOS 14.7 dropped last week. Uh, they try to fix some things. You know, we kind of mentioned it last week's show. They fixed some things to Apple Watch Unlock. Uh, they fixed some other issues. But the main thing now is iOS 14.7.1 is out. And this is a, a heavy security required update because um, not only uh, does it fix a security flaw that we've kind of talked about before, you know, apps can actually launch some uh, code on your device that will enable you them to take control, change settings. Uh, this 14.7.1 uh, fixes a patch that Apple has recognized that people are actually exploiting. So before we was like, OK, well, this has the, the probability, the potential to do damage. Apple has actually recognized that people have been actually taking advantage of this uh, security flaw. So let me just read straight what it is. It says an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. So that means this is not just something that they're saying, hey, you might could want to look happen. out for this. It could happen. People are actually exploiting this. So like I said, the first one, definitely update your phones, your tablets. Uh, I think Mac uh, Big Sur has an update as well. Uh, but specifically iPhone, iOS, definitely want to update to iOS 14.7.1. Definitely. Yep, yep. So and that's I think something else. I think it. Um, I think I mentioned that 14.7 kind of broke the Apple Watch unlock, but I think in 14.7.1, they kind of fixed it and I kind of tested it on my uh, watch and my phone. For those who don't know, uh, in iOS 14, they introduced the ability to where if you have your watch on and it's locked and you have your phone and you do the face ID, touch ID to unlock your phone, it recognize it has your watch on, recognize it's locked and it'll automatically unlock it without you having to put the little code in. 14.7 broke that. 14.7.1 kind of fixes it. Does make it a little bit better. It's not as fast, but it's definitely better than what it was last week. So just want to put Yeah, and it's like a little well. drop down that's on like the iPhone. And I was mm -hmm. like, it. if you don't pay attention, it can be confusing because on one side of it, it says unlocking. Then there's a button that says lock. lock. So you're like, what do I do? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. So, yeah, basically that notification is as well as new because before... You know, you, you would uh, unlock your phone. It would automatically unlock your watch without any sort of notification. But I think they that brought that notification in to where it's kind of showing you, okay, I'm letting you know I'm unlocking your watch. Are you sure you want to do this? If not, press this button. But they don't get you know, specific like that. Back. They just Me say, watch back. yeah, they just say like like Nikki said that drop down. It says iPhone unlocking, and it says lock. Like, <laughs> I don't know which phone, one. I don't want my watch unlocked. Lock that back real quick. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, just want to let you know that. Like I said, uh, well, I'll talk about it a little bit more later, but, you know, definitely update to 14.7.1 if you can hear my voice. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to the next story. Um, iOS 15 to consider weather when suggesting driving routes. Now, you know, for those of us who <laughs> depend on Apple Maps, I think most people kind of moved on to Google Maps or Waze because Apple took a little bit to get started. But for us who use it, it's starting it's starting to get on par as Google Maps. And this is just one other feature that may bring them at a little bit closer. So basically what mean what it means is uh, you put in a directions, you put, you know, put in an address. Not only will it give you directions based on traffic, which is what pretty much most of them do nowadays. This one's also going to look to offer alternative routes 
based on adverse weather conditions uh, when I was 15, not right now, but when we get I was 15 in the fall um, around September is when you'll get that uh, functionality. So basically like flash flooding, especially flash flooding, like if, for instance, if it uh, if it, there's been reports that on a particular road it's been flooded, there's water on it, you know, iOS 15 will definitely take the steps to give you a uh, suggest an alternate route. And then, of course, you have to agree whether or not you want to take that route again. But I um, thought that was pretty cool um, that Apple is actually saying, OK, and it'll actually say on I'm looking at a link on iMore and it actually shows a picture of this functionality in use. And basically what it does is if you're familiar with Apple Maps, it'll show you one route and it'll say, you know, two hours and 57 minutes. It'll show you another route that says four hours and four minutes. But with this new iOS 15 release, it'll show you a third route or another alternate route that'll say avoids flash flood warning, for example. So I just thought that was pretty cool that Apple isn't done with Apple Maps. They are actually trying to uh, update it to, like I mentioned, keep it on par with Google Maps, Waze and the like. Um, so, so the third one I have is a recent patent grant points to Apple thinking about doing Touch ID and Face ID, but inside the screen, or let me say even better, behind the screen of future iPhones. Now, of course, it's not going to be coming in iOS 15. It's not, not going to be coming up in the upcoming iOS 13, I mean, uh, iPhone 13s or whatever they call it. But maybe future phones, if this patent is true, uh, Apple may be looking to put touch ID and face ID behind the screen. So instead of like, for instance, at the top of your iPhone, you've got the notch where it has the front facing camera and it also has the sensors to detect your face. Uh, those sensors to detect your face may be behind the screen instead of up at the top of the phone with the notch. So shrinking it, the notch, I guess. Right. And adding touch ID to behind the screen. So instead of you having a home button, Apple will keep the no button, no home button, and it'll give you the ability to actually touch your screen to unlock your phone with your thumbprint. So I guess I want to get, you know, is that move you at all or do you not care at all? Or uh, I don't really care. I just think it just makes sense um, that that's a natural progression, um, especially since folks have gotten used to not having the, the home button, which I like personally. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you more screen real estate. And the fact that you can already control your phone with touch Mm -hmm. It just makes sense that they would allow it to kind of, for lack of a better word, raise up um, kind of under the glass for a thumbprint. So it seems just to me like the natural progression of where this type of the usability that we have of the phone now and the way that technology is going. It's just it just makes sense that things get more integrated um, and sleeker and, and less bulky. So. Right. So the flip side, yeah. So, the, but the flip side of that would be, um, it'll be interesting to see how fixable phones are now that they're mm -hmm. integrating even more functionality into fewer parts. Because right now, on a phone with a home button, like the iPhone eight, I think it's the last one they did with a home button. You could fix the home button because it's a separate piece from the screen. Same thing with the camera, same thing with the sensors right now in current phones, those phone, those compartment, those uh, components huh, are actually, even though they're behind the screen in the notch, they're actually a separate component of the screen. It sounds like the way they're going to do these future phones based on this patent, all of that's going to be integrated into the screen, which means you know, if you're having a problem with the sensors, if you're having a problem with Touch ID, you're going to have to replace the whole entire screen if you can even do that. And, you know, Apple may make it to where you can't replace just the screen because it's got biometrics into it. And it just, that's just something I don't think you want to get from a third party <laughs> developer. Or more certifications <laughs> in order to change the phone, you're going to have to be like specially certified and trained right, right. to do this that's 
That's probably about the only way I can think of that right. would work. And you're not going to want to get, you know, your homeboy, your homegirl from around the corner to fix your phone at that point. You know, you'll be yeah, right. damaging the phone beyond or, repair. Or, you know, like you said, uh, having your biometrics built into that screen and you got to have somebody take it off. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I want to have my fingerprints or my, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's more complicated than that. But just the idea of, like you said, having homeboy around the corner, <laughs> yeah. you know, set up your biometrics. I don't know if that sounds right. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. So that is it actually for the lowdown. We're going to move right into second string where we talk all things tech. Uh, it looks like Instagram is full speed ahead with letting letting the youngins get uh, hooked on social media because they have decided they're going to uh, release new features that are actually going to tighten security around teen, teen users. So I'll just read specifically from the story we found. Uh, the company says it will now allow default users private accounts at sign up if they're under the age of 16 or under 18 in certain locales, including the European Union. It will also push existing users to users under 16 to switch their accounts to private if they have not already done so. In addition, Instagram will roll out new technology aimed at reducing unwanted contact from adults like those who have already been blocked or reported by other teens and it will change how advertisers can reach its teenage audience. So that all sounds good. Mm -hmm. Again, I guess the question is, um, how young is too young? You know, um, I think they, uh, like I mentioned, they are, seems like they're doing these new features to entice parents to feel better about their kids on Instagram and to entice younger kids to actually get on Instagram you know, by saying, hey, we're, we've got them covered. And while all these sound common sense, you would think not just adults, like, for instance, this one. Um, in addition, Instagram will roll out new technology aimed at reducing unwanted contact from adults like those who have already been blocked or reported by other teens. Take out the adults part, take out the teens part and say, like those who have already been blocked or reported by other users. You know, like if I'm a, being a creep on Instagram, for example, and I'm all in women's DMs saying inappropriate, you know, jerkish, even sexually, you know, explicit things. And that woman blocks me. And the reason why she blocked me because of sexually advancing, you know, all those exploitative things, I would think Instagram would also block me from other women users in general. Uh, but I mean, that's just me talking out loud. Uh, what do you think well, about you all this? Too much, like right. So, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, like I said, it'd be interesting to see um, what Instagram does more uh, to, like I said, to get those younger folks. Because again, um, I think Facebook, who, which owns Instagram, has kind of um, succeeded the idea that young kids are going to get on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So they're really trying to get them on Instagram. <laughs> to, yeah, to, but yeah. the thing is, they already don't have a good handle on it for adults. Right. I don't know how they expect this to be better for children who can be groomed and assaulted and, you know, harassed on this app. I mean... YouTube doesn't have a great handle on it, and it's a lot of it over there. Right. So, I what don't... can they do any better? Right. And right. they, like I, like you were mentioning, if you were harassing me on Instagram and I blocked you, you should block this person because they're harassing a person already. Mm -hmm. If they can't get access to this person, then in all likelihood, a sexual harasser is going to find somebody else to harass. Right, right. Criminals and deviants and just trash people are going to find a way to continue to be these type of people. So unless you have some sort of global network wide protocols that actually work and not just sound good, then I, right. don't, I don't know how any of this is going to work. Right. And ultimately, I think it's going to fall on parents to do well. It should already 
But I think parents are going to have to start doing a better job of um, paying closer attention to what their kids are into and what they're doing. Because, again, Instagram is doing this not, in my opinion, Instagram is not doing this to protect, you know, all users. It seems like it's doing this. Well, not just that. I think it's using this to entice younger folks to get on the Internet, Mm -hmm. you know, not saying, hey, you know, uh, trust us, you know, trust your and trust your kids safety and privacy with us. It's like, what can we do to get more kids on here? (laughs) And, you know, like uh, like I said in the pre-show, cash rules everything around me. And like I said, uh, data is can be monetized and. The earlier you can get kids on your platform to start mining that data, the more profitable uh, that data will be. So, you and know, that's my, and that would be my other concern: mm-hmm. tracking where these kids go after they leave your site, mm-hmm. especially if they're not on an Apple device where you can, you know, choose and not to track. Like, what are they going to do with this data of these children? Right. I mean. You know, what are the broader implications? What are the ethical implications behind all of this? We shall Who's see. Have access to this data. What are they going to do with it? Right, right. We shall see. Um, you know, Apple, certain companies are trying to make it easier for users to control their data. You know, uh, data, like we've mentioned, show and show and show and show and show. You know, data is becoming the most important, important thing on these social media networks, not sharing time, not sharing pictures with your family. Not, you know, joining groups of things that interest you. You know, it's all about the data. So, you know, as time goes on, you know, that data is going to be even more important. And the quicker they can get it means, you know, they got to get you early. So, I, I, in my opinion, I think what's mm-hmm. behind this with Instagram. They're like, how can we get these kids younger? Oh, let's. We, we got we're, you're safe <laughs> air quotes. So, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So the next story I got here is, um, I guess, is personal, (laughs) not really personal, but my personal interests. Uh, FAA rolls out a new mandatory tests for drone pilots. And this is not people who are trying to fly drones commercially, you know, don't run a business. It involves drones, not trying to make drones or not trying to develop new software technology for drone pilots. These are average people who go on Amazon and go buy a drone, you are considered a drone pilot. So this uh, new trust uh, certification, a knowledge test, I'm gonna call it certification, it's a knowledge test and it's called trust and it's a, um, a short for the, recre- the Recreational Unmanned Aircraft System Systems Safety Test. And so this goes for anybody who has bought a drone or who currently owns a drone Starting on June 22nd, you're going to have to take this test. Uh, According to the story that I read, the test is super easy uh, and basically just teaches you the rules as it relates to where you can fly, what you can do. Of course, you can't fly it around people. You can't fly it at airports, can't fly it at uh, national parks, you know, any of those places. So it kind of gets you, gives you those information. And then you have to take a test at the end. Once you pass the test, boom. Uh, you register your uh, drone, which is what you're supposed to do anyway. If you buy a new drone, you got to register it with the FAA. Take this test. Boom, you'll be good to go. The negative is uh, if they catch you with an unregistered drone and they catch you without your certification, which you have to carry this around specifically, especially if you're flying a drone, if they catch you without it, uh, FAA may start to issue $1,000 a pop fines. So last this thing, is the federal government. This is FAA. Right. They regulate airplanes. Right. So, yeah. And people have been uh, known to do some crazy things with drones, you know, fly them around. The exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. I never right. forget. I never forget. And I keep telling the story. But I used to in college, I was a resident assistant. And at the end of the beginning of the school year, we used to get all the people in, on our floor. I was kind of like the captain of my particular floor. And then we had to have a meeting with our whole floor, all the new residents. Here's the rules. Can't do this. You got to be in at a certain time. You know, here's the policy when it comes to, you know, uh, bringing girls over. Don't fool. Don't pull the fire alarm. And then that's about it. Right. So Mm -hmm. that night 
Somebody pulls fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you told them not to do, they that do. was just a list of things for them to do. <laughs> <laughs> they do the exact opposite. So again, like I said, uh, definitely make sure you know you uh, are following the rules, of course, because you what you don't want to do is get caught doing something. Because like I said, thousand dollar fine. That's about how much a drone cost. So you know you do the math on whether or not you want to pay a fine that costs more than the actual drone. So. All right. Uh, moving on. The last story in second string is this fin, fintech startup that I wanted to highlight. Landis raises one hundred and sixty five million dollars to make home ownership more accessible. So I'll just read this specifically from the story. Uh, the New York based fintech company receives referrals from real estate agents and mortgage lenders to work with prospective home buyers who are typically unable to qualify for a mortgage due to poor credit, lack of down payment savings or debt. And of course, the reason why this is important, because there are a lot of people who have good jobs, may have good payment history, i.e. like paying rent, but isn't necessarily doesn't factor in, factor in into good credit, which, of course, you know, we've learned back in 2008, 2009, predatory lending. You know, they jumped on people who otherwise couldn't qualify for a regular loan, put them in this crazy uh, mortgage with this crazy interest, couldn't Was afford that the, it. Uh, what they call arms? Arms, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Adjust, adjustable rate mortgages that were adjustable in the sense that one month you could be paying, you know, 2%. 2%. Next, you know, month or next year, depending on how. The the, in, right. You could be paying. 12, 13, 20 percent, which is insane. So that nuts fast. Long story going short, housing market crash because people defaulted on loans because they couldn't afford them. So fast forward to 2021. We've got this new startup Landis that is specifically designed or is putting itself as being specifically designed to help people who, like I said, poor credit, uh, lack of down payment or debt, which are specifically, you know, um, People making minimum wage, you know, people who you know, normally could not afford um, to qualify for a decent mortgage. So this company is looking out for them. And another thing is backed by people like Jay-Z and Will Smith. Uh, they had they both have their own respective investment arms, because nowadays the cool thing to do with the cool kids is to start, you know, investing in startups. And yep. a VC starting a VC. So Jay Z, Will Smith, both have VCs, and they have decided to invest in this Landis. Which you know, if you follow the track record of a Jay Z, you follow the track record of a Nas, you follow the track record of even people like um, what's the guy? Serena Williams. Serena She's Williams. Yeah. No, there was somebody. Oh, oh yeah, um, mm. uh, Three Six Mafia. <laughs> um, I mean, why uh, not? Um, I, I didn't put this in the story, in, you know, but I thought it was pretty interesting. You know, they kind of took off. Um, what's their names? Um, anyway, members of Three Six Mafia, uh, for those who don't know, they are mid 90s, mid to late 90s rap group from Outcast. the South. Right, right. They, they're kind from Memphis. Pure. I can't think of none of their names. Juicy J, that's the name of it. Uh, <laughs> He, he did a couple of tweet threads and was like, you know, I was going to buy a chain, but instead I invested in, you know, so-and-so. And they kind of, you know, I, I was going to buy, you know, a mansion, but instead I invested in this. So and all that, all that to say around the world to say, it seems like all the cool, you know, the cool celebrities, athletes, LeBron James, you know, a lot of these athletes, entertainers, celebrities are starting to see the benefits from investing in some of these startups, so it, it, Long -term it's kind of money, generational right. money there, and not they're just that, for. they're investing in things that matter to people who look like them. You know, mm -hmm. i.e., you know, the the mortgage mortgages, uh, home ownership has never been on par for Black folks as far as achieving wealth, as achieving generational wealth. As it been as it as it has been to other people. So the fact that people like Jay Z, Will Smith are starting to recognize that and are investing in companies that are looking to try to fix that, I think it says a lot. It's dope. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So that's all I had for second string. 
Uh, we'll move right into For the Culture uh, versus. This, they're still going on, still going strong. Uh, the latest one, uh, Dipset versus The Locks. For those who have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Again, those are, I'd say, mid-90s. Mid to late early. 90s, yeah, early, early 2000, 2000s, yeah, yeah. Uh, rap groups out of New York. They were never yeah. really, I, I didn't say they were, yeah, they weren't really against each other. You know, um, they were two of the most more popular New York rap groups at the time. So it kind of makes sense to fast forward to 2021. Now they're doing a versus uh, and it's going to be live audience. It's going to be in New York. I think it's going to be in Madison Square Garden. I think they're actually selling tickets. Surprised. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, selling tickets to, and I think it's at Madison Square Garden. I think, correct, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. And it's going to be, I think, this weekend, or I think it's this weekend on August third. So yeah. I guess I wanted to ask, were you, uh, did you uh, listen heavy to Dipset or the Locks back in the day? Uh- casual listener when they first mm-hmm. announced it announced uh this was the next pairing uh, in one of my group chats it was like yeah i think i'm gonna skip this one it's like yeah i think i'm gonna skip this one so i may you know kind of pop in see what's going on on twitter mm-hmm. but for the most part you know i only you know know a few songs here and there um, so this isn't really my jam, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I'm sure New York is going to go up for this. So <laughs> right. <laughs> I, hope good, I hope it's a good time for them. Yeah. No, I was a fan of the locks. Not so much Dipset, but I do, you know, a couple individual artists from there. You know, you listen to some, some songs you can't help not listen to, especially right. from, you know, Cameron, yeah. a couple other guys. But the locks, the, the, I was a fan, big fan. So I'm definitely going to tune in. Uh, to this one, it'll be interesting to see again, like we mentioned in our pre-show, you know, if you are a Patreon subscriber, uh, you'll definitely get that inside scoop. But if not, definitely join our Patreon so you can get our live uh, exclusive content. But I, I mentioned that, you know, uh, COVID is this Delta variant is back in full force, it seems like. So uh, we'd be interested to see how they handle that being a live audience, actually selling tickets when versus traditionally has been online, you know, um, it was two artists out of the pandemic. Right, we was we was out of the pandemic. It was online, you know. You had the two artists, you know, and maybe their crews, you know, their support team, and that was about it. But now, like I said, we're getting to they're going to have a live audience, and it'd be interesting to see how they handle things down this new Delta variant is starting to take off. But hopefully, nobody gets sick. Hopefully, nothing goes off without a hitch. Hopefully have a good show because, again, like I mentioned, Versus is kind of taking off, you know, and they're, and they're, it's profitable. As you can see now, they're selling live tickets. So they turn nothing into something. So we definitely want to see that continue. And then the second story I got for the culture, the uh, baby is tripping again. Again. Uh, <laughs> we talked about it either last show or the show before to where, you know, he kind of. For lack of a better term, embarrassed, used used some kids to try to get some social media clout. Uh, Didn't kind of turn out exactly the way. Yeah, it kind of backfired a little bit, you know. um, But then fast forward to either this weekend or a couple days ago. This weekend at Rolling Loud. uh, He was at a performance, uh, was in the middle, in between sets, in between songs, whatever he was doing. Uh, (laughs) For whatever reason. (laughs) What do you say? I said just went on a rant. Yeah, for that whatever. Didn't have anything connected to what he was right. performing about? It wasn't a new song uh, related to it, but um, I don't. I can't find the actual quotes. But basically, he was like, you know, art rap artists. They really don't have any sort of transition. It's like the 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 DJ plays a song, they sing half of the words, he moves into another song. No no clothes change, no stage change, no. You know, choreography change, no art. It's just like they kind of stand around. So I guess he felt the dead air or something. So he decided to say something along the lines of, shout out to all the people. Um, he uh, said, put your lights up. He was telling yeah, me yeah, that's to what put your lights up for their yeah, phones. Yeah, yeah. Put, put your lights up to all the people not having sex in the parking lot. And I, I'm, uh, there's more you to it. You cleaned it up a lot. Yes. <laughs> it was clean- quite graphic. Right. And quite- very detailed, like he might have known something about it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to, and specifically, you know, shout out to all. Did he say gay people? Did he say specifically? 
he called out gay people and said that they all have like HIV or AIDS and they yes. can get them, like two yeah. weeks. Right. Put your put your put your lights up uh for all the gay people or something like that, uh like Nika said, that uh who out here This information and ignorance. Yeah, not homophobia. Uh, catch, catching AIDS and dying in two weeks or something like that, which again totally not what's happening right now as it relates to HIV and AIDS. You know, so then after, I guess, people with Twitter caught wind of it and was kind of calling him on it, then he comes out and kind of makes it worse. <laughs> and I have those quotes. He says, um, anybody who done ever been affected by HIV, AIDS, y'all affected, got the right. Affected. Affected right. Affect. with an e. E, e. With an E. Right. Instead of affected. And that's the difference. <laughs> Cause and effect. Versus you personally, something happened to you, affected. That's the difference. Right. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Um, y'all got the right to be upset. What I said was insensitive, even though I had no intentions on offending anybody. So my apologies. But the LGBT community, I ain't tripping on y'all, do you? Y'all business is y'all business. Which is totally different than what he said at the thing. Because he was like, specific. like I said, I cleaned it up a lot. <laughs> a lot. It was pretty graphic. <laughs> right. So, um... Again, and that's was those that that kind of cleanup was even later than some of the other things I saw. Um, and then he came out with a video. Oh, did he? I hadn't seen that. <sighs> even worse. And that's why people he's losing endorsements. Mm -hmm. Elton John has come out and spoke out against him. Right. Some and that's top what... girls that he has records with have come mm -hmm. out against it um and so it's this is, just he got so, his fellow rappers who are mm -hmm. also homophobic and problematic and sexist and misogynist massage norist coming to his defense yeah so this is what i should have read this one first <laughs> this is his first explanation this is not the apology this is the explanation as to some of the things he was saying oh he made some other comments about women uh what did he say uh, well, needed... the thing that's being lost to me in all of this mm -hmm. is had he not been homophobic and had misinformation, people probably would have kind of just went with it. But the biggest thing for me is he has a song with Megan Thee Stallion. Mm -hmm. They were allegedly friends. We all know that Tory Lanez allegedly shot her mm -hmm. um, in the feet um, and has been going at her. He brings this guy on stage and performs with him mm -hmm. not even an hour after Megan had performed. I believe they're saying that she was still actually behind the stage when all of this occurred. Um, and she has a restraining order got out against him. So they're kind of like, well, did he violate the restraining order? All this to say, it was the homophobia that got people up in um, a row, not the domestic violence not mm -hmm. the misogyny, mm -hmm. not the massage war. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop. Keep going. Right, right. So let me. So I dig a little bit deeper, and here's what here's what he says, and this is the actual comments at the show. He says, "Anybody who done ever been affected? No, no." He says, "No." Let me find it. Hold on. I said it again. Hold on. Where is it at? I found it. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, he says, "If you didn't show up today." With HIV, AIDS, or any of them sex deadly sexually transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two and three weeks, put your cell phone lighter up. And he says, fellas, he didn't necessarily say gay folks. He said, fellas, if you ain't sucking blank in the parking lot, put your cell phone lighter up. And like I said, he did mention some other stuff about women. I was trying to find that stuff, but I can't find it. But anyway, his initial response was, um, oh, where's it at? Where is it at? I had it and then I lost it. Um, all right, hold on. Let me let me get this other one. Um, let me find it. He said, I wasn't going on a rant. That's called a call to action. That's what it's called because I'm a live performer and I'm the best live performer. I'm like, uh, no, that's not what you do. <laughs> And then he come, he follows up and says, "Y'all digested it wrong." Yes, that's what I was. That's what I was looking for the other way. Yeah, y'all digested it wrong. Wait, let me find those comments. Like, dude, what and are you talking the about? Video, just digging deeper. And Ti is like, if Lil Nas X can, you know, say what he want, then why can't the baby? Because 
<laughs> there's a difference between being yourself and rapping about other what, people. Yeah, and then there's a whole nother thing to be homophobic mm-hmm. and misogynistic and spreading misinformation when there's already a stigma in the black community around HIV AIDS. And he Straight said think they can't get it because they're not gay that is not how any of this works and if you catch it if you do get it fast forward to today you can live a productive life even even continue to have sex and not transmit it to anybody and live a healthy productive 80 90 100 year old regular life so not only was it insensitive it's the technical term is he was loud and wrong (laughs) Loud and wrong. Right, right. Like I said, so fast forward, you know, everybody's speaking out. You know, he's starting to lose endorsements. Uh, Like you mentioned, um, uh, Elton John, you know, specifically mentioned him in some tweets and put out, you know, the correct (laughs) information as it relates to HIV AIDS. So, yeah, like I said, all that kind of then kind of forced him to come up with his anybody who done ever been affected by AIDS, HIV. Y'all got the right to be upset, but what I said was insensitive, even though I have no intentions on offending anybody. So my apologies, but like I said, he should have stopped there. He says, but the LGBT community, I ain't tripping on y'all, do you? Y'all business is y'all business. Well, obviously it ain't. Like I said, if you took it, it. you took it upon yourself, he was one of those memes. Nobody was even talking to you. Right. He's one of those memes to where it says nobody Colon and then mm-hmm. the baby. Put your lighters up if you ain't got AIDS. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> and he has this new he has this new video out and it's called Not Given What It's Supposed to Give. A clearly black A A V E mm-hmm. vernacular term that mm-hmm. was bred out of the L G the black LGBTQ community. Yes. It's like and it was like it's like a jail type scene and yeah. people are thinking he kind of got a little miffed because Lil Nas X jail video yeah. was like so popular and everything. Yeah. Yeah, Bruh. it's it given what it's supposed to give, which that ain't even right anyway. But that's uh, not even the right way to say it. <laughs> yeah, but you did. Black LGBTQ That's where it came out of yeah. vernacular and trying to make a it's like God, can you just get swallowed up by a hole because this is the yeah. worst. Yeah, it says, I'm reading about this video. It says, in one scene, the baby holds up a sign with the word, word AIDS on it. The video concludes with a message written in rainbow font. Don't fight hate with hate, followed by a weird non-apologetic statement. My apologies for being me the same way you want the freedom to be you. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. <laughs> That's not how hate works. <laughs> <laughs> and even if it did, I can hate me for being me. You can't turn around and hate me because I hate myself. You mind your business. Let me hate Stay myself over, over here. <laughs> My thing is a lot of these rappers, Lil Bootsy, the baby, Ti, all the folks, they seem to be in the gay people's business a all lot the time. To not want to be around, associated with gay, and it's not. I don't think it's even like the broader gay community, I think it's specifically gay black men they have a problem with. And to me, that signals That's a whole nother that's a whole nother podcast. You need to work through. We have seen, I have seen, uh I can't think of the politician's name, but we have seen many a politician staunchly against gay rights and frequently, more occasion than one, have been caught or outed Grindr. as as participating Activity. in gay activities. So the term mm-hmm. is projecting is what it is the actual term. So I mean, if so facto one plus one equals two, you do the math, you know, all right. these rappers got all these things to say, constantly bothering the LGBT community. <laughs> thinking about you who ain't even thinking about y'all who come to your concerts who listen to your music and y'all got the nerve to turn on them for what exactly why are you in their business i think (laughs) they may need to have some deep looks at themselves themselves. because Mm -hmm. they are um 
kind of put themselves on front street mm. without even really recognizing it. They, what is the phrase? Doth do protest too much? Right. Well, my, I was going to say walk like a duck, talk like a duck. <laughs> that was my duck, state. Duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it could, at the very least, it could just be jealousy and envious from people like Lil Nas X, who have he's decided to turn. He decided to turn his that hate into you know creativity, art, he's a money. Genius. He right. really is. And he, I think he has this social media game on lock. Mm-hmm. And I think, like you said. He is so free. Again, he's what, 21, 22? He's a really young guy. Mm -hmm. I think they may have some anger that he is who he is unapologetically. And is able to flourish. Not giving a flying flip about Mm -hmm. what anybody says. And then they're like, again, I think it's one of two things, or it could be both things. Jealousy. Or you may be avoiding Mm -hmm. something about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, by trying to be over masculine, calling yeah, yourself overcompensate, yeah, yeah, calling yourself the the most masculine man. I mean, you're kind of um shining a little light on yourself yeah, that buddy. I don't think you intended to. Mm-hmm. So, but like I said, uh, like the baby said, do you? I guess I don't know. <laughs> right, and if you are a um you know black rapper. Um, and you are gay or bisexual, I mean, live freely as who you I are. I mean, obviously it's working. Nobody don't care. I, obviously nobody cares. Nobody <laughs> cares. Yeah, but that, that, that ultra masculinity that is directly tied to entertainment, uh, artistry, sports. you know, sports, you know, that's slow and surely starting to become unraveled. And that's a good thing. You know, because who it doesn't have to be one way, you know, you can rap, you can act, you can participate in a sport, sport and be whoever you want to be. It doesn't have to be like, for instance, like we were talking about in the pre-show, you don't have to love everything American to represent Team USA. You can then decide to represent Team USA And decide the pressure is too much. Let's take a step back and have agency over yourself and that be okay. It's like you can do two things at once. You can become the greatest. You can become the GOAT like they, you know, Simone Biles and Serena Williams and have a bad day as well and say, you know what? Today is not my day. And that'd be all right, too. You know, you can that. Because you are a person, you are a human. Right. We're multi-layered, multifaceted. You don't have to put yourself in a particular box, and you that's don't have to what fit a stereotype. lot of these hyper-masculine right. rappers do. Fit they the stereotype. They put themselves in a box, mm-hmm. and then when they want to step out of it, they can't because they box themselves in so much, and they're pissed about it. And, and they see somebody else, do. like you said, and then they see somebody else who didn't box themselves in, and instead of uh, saying, and being oh man, celebrated. they're making right. money from it, right? And, and you're like, Well, I could have been me and I could still make my money, and now, and now you, you got some angst, right? Yeah. Now you got some angst, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So, but again, like I said, hopefully, you know, get some healing, bros, yeah, yeah, See a or therapist, at the very least, work out your issues at and be very, who you are. At the very least, mind your business, it never ceases very to amaze minimal. me, it very ceases to, ceases to amaze me. How, you know, rappers and just those machismo people, you know, all these people hating on me, you know, all these people in my business, you know, I ain't trying to be like, no, these women out here running their mouths, keep, you know, this a cold. And then they turn around and do all the exact opposites. They in other people's business. You're running your mouth like, like, like you can't keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you love social media for every little thing. Like you're you in your little the, group chat, just chit chat, chit and chit, chipping, chipping right, away. Right. Being the exact people you claim to be so different from. So and yeah, you're it's the amazing. one who put this on yourself. Nobody yeah. else did. Right. You put so. yourself in this box. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I said, we hopefully things start to change in that whole industry. And like I said, your boy, he's not doing a good job of cleaning up things. So it seems like he take. One step forward, take two steps back. So he got the white pop girls mad. He got yeah. the white gays mad. Yeah, no so, more. And you know, he was on Saturday Night Live. He was kind of like that new up and coming. So we'll see if he can 
his uh if his, if his you know status he can you know probably the within storm. the people in the community that think like him he'll yeah. probably be okay yeah. or sympathizers right um to him he'll probably be okay but his once wide breadth of access yeah. to quote unquote mainstream, i.e. white media, right. that is, he's yeah. got himself in quite a pickle. Yeah, okay? they're like, like we like already, they like, access. yeah, oh bro, we already dealing with Me Too. <laughs> we already dealing with the Black Lives Matter. What we not gonna do is add uh, fighting LGBT gay folks on top. We don't love on our <laughs> right. back. We not add another one. Yeah, we gonna pass on this brand deal with you, sir. <laughs> all right all right so moving on to the hookup like i mentioned before earlier in the show uh my hookup for this week is download ios 14.7.1 uh, apple has recognized there is an exploit that ios 14.7.1 patches that apple has recognized uh people are actually exploiting so if you don't want your uh, iPad, iPhone, you know, your Apple gadgets taken over and possibly used for nefarious reasons, if not stealing all your information, you know, definitely update to iOS 14.7.1 to keep your devices that more protected. And I think um, that is it. If you don't have anything else, Nick, I think that is it for the week. Uh, yep, like I said, we, defi we definitely appreciate you all hanging in with us for this long. Uh, if you want to show more support, I'm um, give you a couple ways to do it. Uh, first way, you can download, rate, and review our podcast. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Sp Spotify. Best things you can do is rate them and write a review. That pushes us up the totem pole to get towards the top. Uh, you can also engage with us on in social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SnobOSCast. Uh, you can also watch us on YouTube. We put these episodes on YouTube. Definitely go watch them. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos, hit the notification bell, do all that thing. Uh, we're on YouTube at Snobboys Cast. Uh, you can also leave us comments and suggestions. You can do so on the web. We're on snoboscast.com. And if you want to shoot us an email, if you want to choose a more private way, you can do that via snoboscast at gmail.com. Finally, uh, probably most important way, you can support us monetarily. Uh, you can support us by going to patreon.com forward slash snoboscast and become a snobist. Uh, for as little as five dollars a month, you get access to a live show. You get access to pre-show exclusive content that you won't find on a regular show and you get access to our chat community. Uh, finally, you can also uh, support us via PayPal. If you want to give us a one time love offer and donation, you can do so via PayPal at paypal.me forward slash snob OS. Like I said, if that's it, uh, we are out this week. Peace. Bye, everybody.